My fellow Manosphereans, I'm Anthony Dream Johnson, founder and CEO of the 21 Convention, co-founder and CEO of the Redman Group, chairman of 21 Studios. Today I'm speaking to you because of the growing crisis of honor, integrity, and masculinity itself plaguing and holding back our community from true greatness. I'm directly referring to the recent controversy surrounding the actions of an author and self-proclaimed godfather of our community. The purpose of my words today are to review, bring clarity to, and summarize the real-life actions and choices of former speaker, business partner, and friend known to you as Rolla Tomasi. I make this video with a heavy heart, the reputation of my life's work on the chopping block, and with great hope and optimism for the future of this worldwide community of men and fathers. To begin, on June 2, 2019, Rolla Tomasi was confronted in a private 21 convention speaker chat by several alumni speakers, including but not limited to George Bruno, Socrates, Alexander Cortez, Ivan Throne, and to the witness of many more. This confrontation focused on several related issues, including an incident from the 21 convention in 2018 involving Rolla Tomasi and feminist New York Times reporter Nellie Bowles. The associated long-standing conspiracy to conceal the true nature of these events and related unethical conduct by Rolla Tomasi in his association with the 21 convention, a self-declared silent partner. In response to the mounting evidence of this unethical conduct, in close counsel with top alumni speakers and consistent with our long-standing policy and terms, I chose to immediately remove Rolla Tomasi as a speaker from all future 21 convention events, as well as his regular involvement in the Red Man Group show. Rolla worked to immediately write and publish a blog post that same day, titled 21 Convention Dates Cancellation. In this post, he announced his removal from all 21 convention events, encouraged attendees to seek refunds on their tickets, in contrast to our long-standing all-sales final policy, and stated then as a minority owner of the Redman Group company that the podcast itself would be dissolved and the channel disbanded. Statements that significantly damaged the Redman Group brand left thousands of fans in confusion and that Rolo had zero confirmation of or authority to make of any kind. On June 8, 2019, my company released a 15-page public statement providing facts, evidence, and detail on Rolo Tomasi's sudden removal from the 21 Convention and Red Med Group brands. You can review this document in a link beneath this video at any time. Later revealed to the public by YouTuber and Red Man Group panelist DDJ is that these actions by Rolo Tomasi were not isolated or accidental, but part of a larger pattern of behavior involving a failed coup on the Red Man Group, and as revealed today, were part of the greatest conspiracy our community has ever seen. And Rolo's own documented language to burn down the whole of the manosphere, assassinate the legacy, credibility, and future of all 21 convention events, to conspire with other speakers to aggressively take over the Redman Group, and most importantly, use its function as a parallel speaker organization to build a new manosphere summit over the dead body of the 21 convention, the longest running, largest, and most powerful event the manosphere has ever seen. 17 events across five countries over the past 13 years. Hundreds of speakers, thousands of videos, enjoyed by millions around the world. This disgusting, effeminate conduct by Rolo and his allies amounts to more than the attempted murder of my life's work that began at, all, at 17 years old, but was an attempted coup in our entire community. In a word, treason. Let's pause and reflect now on a foundational principle that Rolo Tomasi is fond of repeating in his work for the Rational Mill series. Behavior is the only measure of, is the only true measure of motivation and intent. One more time, right from Rolo's blog, behavior is the only true measure of motivation and intent. I happen to agree, Rolo, so let's have a look at your behavior and see what comes up. This is Rolo Tomasi speaking at the 15th edition of the 21 Convention in October of 2018, giving his main presentation to over 200 men gathered from around the world to hear him and dozens of other speakers present their ideas on our platform. Man, how many people here right now are here and if your work found out about it, that you would be in trouble. Anybody? Hey, how, how many people here would, yeah, would you lose your, do you think you would lose your job? I think you probably would. I say, I, I already know that Goldman lost his job. Just two days later, Rolo would disobey a direct order from myself as CEO and the will of over 10 speakers who I counseled with on the issue of Nellie Bowles, a potentially hostile mainstream media reporter who could put the privacy, identity, and futures of our attendees at major risk, something we had promised in good faith to safeguard them from to the best of our ability, consistent with all 21 convention events. Seen here, 
Rollo Tomasi directly invited the New York Times reporter with a history of writing hit pieces on speakers like Dr. Jordan Peterson to a private social gathering for our attendees and speakers. He had been speaking with this woman for months and writing, and yet remained sitting during the entire encounter like, a, like the silent coward he is. Rollo would go on to deny any involvement in her appearance that night, both in writing and orally to the speakers numerous times, as well as myself. With every opportunity to take masculine responsibility, own his mistakes, apologize, and seek redemption, he chose to instead cover it up in a web of lies and misdirection for over eight months. He lied to my face, he lied in writing, and he lied by omission. He lied to my friends, my speakers, my brothers, my top customers, and more recently, over 40,000 of his own fans. Here are the faces of just some of the men, the men he lied to. George Bruno, Ed Lattimore, Donovan Sharp, Richard Cooper, Alan Roger Curry, Tanner Guzzi, Jack Donovan, Ivan Throne, Texas Dom, Jack Murphy, Hunter Drew, Socrates, Alexander J. A. Cortez, Goldman Unleashed, Elliot Hulse, Dr. Sean T. Smith, and more. Many of these men he claimed to be his own friends. Of even greater importance, they are thinkers and creators many thousands of you watching claim to care about, respect, and admire. Masculine leaders who have helped millions of men improve their lives as men, even helped save them from suicide. Here are over 200 men and fathers he pretended to want to help while secretly lying to them and stabbing them in the back. Men just like you, who trusted him to be a speaker, to be a leader, and above all, to be a man. In January of 2019, Richard Cooper and Rolla Tomasi, alumni speakers and co-founders of the Redman Group, will travel to Florida to visit me, sign paperwork for the Redman Group company, film podcasts and video trailers for both the 21 Convention and Redman Group, and engage in other business and recreational activity, including charter fishing with myself and new speaker Elliot Hulse, and training with professional firearms instructors. Everything was great, so it seemed. Within days of departing Florida, signed agreement for the Redman Group in hand, we launched tickets to the 21 Convention 2019 Special Patriarch Edition for Fathers. Suddenly, to the shock and confusion of thousands of fans, and after speaking multiple times and endorsing our event repeatedly, Richard Cooper suddenly withdrew from speaking and publicly attacked the safety and reputation of the 21 Convention event to over 170,000 of his own YouTube followers. He did so with exactly zero evidence presented of any kind. I soon responded to this nonsense from Richard Cooper that recklessly put the very question of physical safety at our live events in jeopardy. Smarter fans caught on immediately, realized that safety concerns were hollow and unfounded, that I was rightfully defending my event from defamatory statements that could cause real financial harm to the 21 convention, and that Richard Cooper's behavior was sudden, shady, and suspicious. Almost immediately, on February 6, 2019, Rolla Tomasi sent myself and Richard Cooper an email titled The Future of the Redman Group, stating, among other things, my first impulse is to disband RMG entirely, delete the channel. Further, Rolla went on demanding complete control of the Redman Group and all ownership interests transferred to him for free. And if this were not to happen, to dissolve the company entirely. Redman Group panelist and YouTuber DDJ has rightly characterized this as a failed hostile takeover and coup on the Redman Group as almost any first-year business student would. This is a business horror story right out of a magazine. Richard Cooper would eventually get cold feet and sell his ownership in the Redman Group to 21 Studios, giving me primary control of the company, contrary to Rolo's initial desire. We don't know exactly what went on between Rolo Tomasi and Richard Cooper in Florida, but Richard, if there was ever a time to take ownership of your mistakes like a man, something you frequently preach to your audience, now is the time to come clean and seek redemption. A sudden attack on the safety of the 21 convention with zero evidence and self-removal from speaking at the then upcoming Patriarch event was justifiably viewed by many fans as suspicious conduct, concealing secondary hidden motives. To do this in the middle of a brand new ticket launch to a live event where you are a featured speaker in the viral video trailer for it and to make such statements to a large friendly audience was absolutely damaging to sales for this event. For this to be immediately followed by another founder's aggressive, sudden attempt to take over the company is alarming at best and conspiratorial at worst. Rolla would go on to threaten to drop out of speaking at the 21 Convention Patriarch Edition to the witness of confirmed speakers. In addition, he made multiple attempts at alarming other confirmed speakers in regard to their safety at the event. To clarify, we had just lost a major speaker who then attacked the reputation and safety of the event to a large audience. Rolo followed up by also threatening to drop out 
on nothing more than a subjective feeling and uninformed opinion of his own safety. When your event depends on confirmed speakers showing up and speaking, when you have ticket holders counting on the event to take place, when you have signed hotel contracts with large penalties for cancellation, this is called sabotage. The question you need to ask yourself now is, why would Rollo do all this? Aggressive action to obtain control of the Redman Group, threats of deleting and dissolving the entire channel and company, if his extreme demands weren't met, all seemingly timed with a parallel attack on the 21 Convention. It should be known before continuing that Rollo Tomasi and Richard Cooper are the top ticket sellers of all time to the 21 Convention, and that our 2018 revenue was nearly triple that of 2017. But if the Redman Group is just a podcast show, why all the demands? Why risk damaging a relationship with myself and the 21 Convention, a much larger platform, over a small web show? The answer is in the number one iron rule of Tomasi. Always control the frame, but resist giving the impression that you are. And in this endorsement statement from Rollo during his speech at the 21 Convention in 2018, this off-the-cuff statement combined with his frequently stated need for a Red Pill Summit and the Manosphere reveals Rollo's true intentions. This statement contains a no true Scotsman logical fallacy, sets up a cult-like purity test for the Manosphere and Manosphere events, and most importantly, points to chronological thinking. A first implies a second. The only other speaker organization in the Manosphere is the Redman Group. The true purpose of controlling the Redman Group was never to own a small podcast show. It was to create the second real Red Pill Summit, the Redman Summit. Despite his best efforts detailed in a 15-page public statement, the 21 Convention was never controlled by Rollo, and therefore never in his frame. Additional statements surrounding this issue can be found in the extended email, The Future of the Redman Group, which will be released to the public and in the public interest along with the publication of this video. To review, during this attempted takeover, Rollo Tomasi was engaged in an ongoing conspiracy to conceal deceptions surrounding the Nellie Bowles incident from October, including lying by omission to new major speakers of the 21 Convention, such as Elliot Hulse. Dozens of speakers who associated their reputation and name with our event in good faith that other top speakers weren't bullshitting the organizer and trying to steal control of associated platforms that were and would continue to be a part of the 21 Convention experience. In the summer of 2019, Rollo would go on to resign from the Redman Group in disgrace, confess secret existing plans of abandoning the 21 Convention event, news to myself and all on my speakers. Based on the totality of these facts, it is my view that this was a slow motion attempted assassination of the 21 Convention and brand of events. If it burned down from a New York Times hit piece, and our attendees thought themselves unsafe in attending for fear of losing their careers, so be it. If it needed to be defamed for unfounded, zero evidence physical safety concerns, so be it. If the Red Man Group needed to be aggressively taken over and weaponized into a new Red Pill Summit under Rollo's complete control, so be it. If Rollo needed to threaten to drop out of speaking and attempt to scare other speakers out of speaking on their own and attending, further destabilizing the event, so be it. If Rollo needed to work with other speakers to initiate a wave of chargeback disputes against the 21 Convention and on their tickets to the tune of over $40,000 in damages in the middle of an international 21 Convention in Poland, so be it. The 21 Convention is more than an event, however. It is a central organizing force for the most important part of the Manosphere, the real-world offline Manosphere, the preeminent event on the planet for our community, the heart and center, and the longest running in its history now for over 13 years. An attack on the 21 Convention of this magnitude is an attack on the Manosphere itself. To my knowledge, there has never been a civil conspiracy of this scale in our community. To put at risk and attempt to cause catastrophic harm to multiple Manosphere organizations and real-life events. For many of you watching, this information is shocking, as it is directly conflicting and conflicts with the public nice guy persona of Rolo Tomasi the Mr. Rogers Godfather hybrid personality he has crafted in the public space of the Manosphere for years. The man who tells you like a broken record that he's not in it for the money, but will privately state that he's a get-rich-slow guy. To understand the role of Tomasi of the Manosphere, we must look at the original character that inspired Rolo's choice of this name, from the 1997 major motion picture L.A. Confidential, one of Rolo's favorite movies of all time. It should be noted that many Manosphere icons have unusual names like this, Mystery, Style, Socrates, Goldman Unleashed, and myself, Dream, just to name a few. Chosen names are not given names, however. They are chosen for various reasons by the individual. 
Consistent among these reasons, however, is that the name appealed to their core values in some way. They liked the name enough to not only choose it, but retain it over many years, and intentionally be known by this name to millions of readers, fans, and viewers. In our community, Rolo is unique among top creators in that he picked the name of a secret villain, a police captain played by actor James Cromwell, celebrated as a small-time hero by his local com community, while secretly being a murderous, backstabbing traitor to his brothers at the LAPD, and therefore the community as a whole. Actor Guy Pearce in LA Confidential explains the origin of Rolo Tomasi. Rolo Tomasi. Is there more to that, or am I supposed to guess? Rolo was a purse snatcher. My father ran into him off duty. And he shot my father six times and got away clean. No one even knew who he was. I just made the name up to give him some personality. What's your point? Rolo Tomasi's the reason I became a cop. I wanted to catch the guys who thought they could get away with it. Edmund, I want to have a word with you. We're trying to run down a lead on an associate of Vincennes. The records check has led to a dead end. What's the name? Rolo Tomasi. You ever heard Vincennes mention him? No, no, I haven't. Based on documented facts and evidence, sound like anyone you know? The truth is stranger than fiction in this case. The self-proclaimed godfather of the Manosphere has been secretly conspiring to undermine major organizations in our community, has been engaging in rampant, unethical, effeminate conduct, and has been demonstrably been willing to burn down anyone and anything that gets in his way. Our speakers, multiple 21 convention events, the entire Red Man Group platform, and the trust of over 200 attendees he shook hands with. In his own language, burn down the whole of the Manosphere for more control and more fame, New York Times hit piece style. For those of you wondering why I've been so publicly angry, this is why, as any adult, sane, rational man would be, absolutely furious with such treasonous conduct that endangered my life's work. I make no apology for stating that Rolo Tomasi is the biggest fraud, sellout, and traitor our community has ever seen. A shadow gamma king pretending to be your online friend, father figure, and mentor to thousands of men. Men and fathers just like you, who live in the most anti-masculine age ever seen in American history. Men who need help, mentors, and authentic masculine leadership. Men and fathers who are under constant attack from mainstream media organizations, billion dollar brands like Gillette, and even including major professional organizations like the American Psychological Association. In the middle of the greatest feminist shitstorm ever seen, literally the worst timing imaginable, Rolo Tomasi betrays us all. Betrays the first ever emerging movement of men and fathers, organizing together for the interests of men, boys, and fathers everywhere. Shame on you, Rolo. You have brought dishonor to the entire manosphere and done more damage than any feminist could ever dream or hope to achieve. And now it's time to take out your trashy excuse for a soul. Because in the words of Hunter Drew, choices have consequences, Rolo. I have been a reluctant leader in our community for over 13 years, often tapping the leadership of older, wiser men to compensate for my youth. In some cases, this has been fantastic, as in the case of keynote speaker Socrates and chief patriarch Hunter Drew. In other cases, the results are mixed, as in the case of James Marshall. No bad blood, just a mutual bad fit long term. And in the case of Rolo, the result has been a nightmare. A fight for the survival and future of 21 convention events, my life's work, and the Red Man Group itself. This reluctance ends now. I grew up in this community and proudly call it my tribe and my home. And after building more live events at the highest level of quality and scale our community has ever seen, I am declaring myself president of the Manosphere effective immediately. And my first action as president is to permanently exile Rolo Tomasi from the Manosphere for the crime of treason. From this day forward, no media or news organization of any size should take anything Rolo Tomasi says as representative of our community. He is an outcast, a known traitor, and our community's first Benedict Arnold. You are the godfather of nothing, Rolo, and shall forever be remembered as the fraud father of the Manosphere. 
However, contrary to the title of this video, Rollo Tomasi will not be the Hillary Clinton of the Manosphere. Unlike Crooked Hillary, Rollo is not above the law. He and his co-conspirators will be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. There will be fire and fury, consequences for unforgivable actions and choices. To those of you stuck in a grieving process for the fraud father, that's what's going to help you get unstuck. Stuck in denial or rationalizations, remember that the red pill, the essence of the red pill, is truth and reality. The essence of the blue pill is anti-reality, sweet lies used to control and manipulate you for benefit. In this sense, Rolo is much worse than a purple pill huckster. The Rolo pill is the ultimate blue pill of the manosphere. A deeply irrational man, if he can be called that, writing works titled The Rational Male, who has decided and dedicated himself to stirring up drama and chaos behind the scenes, dumping it on others in public, and hiding the truth from you for months. In addition to lying of dozens of respected leaders, two dozens of respected leaders in our space. The red pill is often said to be a cold, harsh, bitter truth. And in this case, that will hold true for many of you. And yet the truth shall set you free from this traitor's web of lies and deception. For this community to survive and thrive, it must be held accountable to masculine standards of conduct. For exiles like Rolo, myself, you, and everyone. Rolo, I am ashamed of you. I'm ashamed that you were ever allowed on my stage, and yet thankful you did, as you have allowed me to show the world who you really are. I really hope that when you die someday of natural causes, that you burn in hell for all of eternity. You deserve worse. To everyone else, this has been Anthony Dream Johnson, your president of the Manosphere. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you soon this October. Buzz Mix and Dick Stenzel. <laughs> so, uh... What does actually make of all this? No, I haven't told him yet. I just came straight from the record. Table. Have you a valediction? <laughs>